All right, this is the review for L. So let's cover that. Um, let's get started by looking at questions one and two. Um, now, to start with, uh, the instructions say for questions one and two, find the inverse of each function algebraically. Also, we need to list the domain range of the inverse functions. So I don't care about the domain range of these two things. I care about what's the inverse's domain range. So let's start by inversing it. Uh, first step of inverse is rewrite and swap x and y. So we have x equals y squared. To solve it, we would square root it. So we would get the square root of x equals y. There's our inverse. So let's talk about what's the domain and range of square root of x. Well, it starts at 0, 0. So our domain starts at 0, our range starts at 0. And we're going to the right. So our domain is going to positive infinity. Our range is going up. So we're going to positive infinity. There's our domain range. Now, let's inverse this thing. Again, start by swapping x and y. Start with dealing with a addition or subtraction. So we have x plus 5 equals 3y squared. Then a division or multiplication. So I have 1 third x plus 5 thirds equals y squared, and then we would deal with any exponents or square roots. So we have square root of 1 third x plus 5 thirds equals y. All right, now our domain and range. Easiest way to deal with this is graph it. So let's do exactly that. I'm gonna plug this in, square root 1 third x plus 5 thirds. If I graph it, my starting point is negative 5, 0. So my domain starts at negative 5, my range starts at 0. Uh, I'm going to the right, so my domain is going towards positive infinity. I'm going up, so my range is going towards positive infinity. That would be my domain range. Now, uh, we want to do some compositions of functions here. So I'm going to put a function inside another function. So let's start with the first one. We have f, we have g, we have h. And I have colors for all of them. Cool. So the first one has g on the outside. Now, the g function is 5x plus 3. The inside is 3x squared minus 2. Howdy. Yeah. I'm just recording a video real quick, so feel free to do whatever. Yeah. All good? Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Um, so what we'll do from here is let's distribute that 5. 5 times 3, 5 times 2. So we'd have 15x squared minus 10 and still have that plus 3 on the end. We can also combine the minus 10 and the plus 3 into minus 7. So 15x squared minus 7 seems like a good answer here. That's as simple as we can make it. Next one, let's do the same thing. We have g on the outside again. So again, 5x plus 3. The inside is the h function, x minus 3 over 5. So what we cancel here? Well, the first thing that we cancel would be the 5s. Five. Multiplying by 5 and dividing by 5 equals 1. So that doesn't really do much. Then the minus 3 and the plus 3, we go away. We just get x. Now, whenever we do a composition and we get x, that means that we have inverses. That's the same thing that we're writing into here. Um, we're there wanting us to do a composition to prove that these things are inverses. So what we can do is we can just put 1 on the outside and 1 on the inside, and we should be good for that. So let's try this. The f function we'll put on the outside, so square root of x minus 3. And the inside, we put the g function, x squared plus 3. Doesn't matter which one's outside or inside, we could have easily set it up the other way, x squared plus 3, and with the f function on the inside. Both ways will give us the same answer. So the first thing that I would do with the example on the left is I get rid of the plus 3 and the minus 3. Then we have square root of x squared, then the square, 
and the square root would go away and just get x. So yes, this means they are inverses. If you had done it the other way around, the squared and the square root would go away first, then plus 3 minus 3 would cancel, you just get x. It doesn't matter which way you do it, both ways gives you the same answer. All right, what's the domain range of this function? Graph it. So let's start with this. Uh, y equals negative square root x minus 7, and then plus 3. Now it looks like here we are starting at 7, 3. So our domain is starting at 7. Our range is starting at 3. Domain is going to the right, so that's toward positive numbers, bigger numbers. So 7 to infinity. Range is going down. So it's going to smaller numbers, negative infinity. So we'll put the negative infinity first. Another way of writing this is x is greater than or equal to 7, and y is less than or equal to 3. Okay, number 7. If we have the point negative 1, 4, what's the inverse? Well, 4, negative 1. Swap the x and the y. That's it. All right. Which of the following apply to the parent square root function? Let's graph it really quick. Square root of x. Okay. It is going up and to the right, so it's not decreasing. X-intercept of 0, 0. Yes, we see that there. Range is greater than or equal to 0. Yes. Starts at 0, goes up. Domains all real numbers. No, because we do not have any negatives. The graph has a maximum at 0, 0. It goes through 0, 0, but it's not a maximum. It's the lowest point, so it would be a minimum. It's an increasing function. Yes. As we go right, we go up. Domain is greater than or equal to zero. All right. Uh, parent square root function. So we have the parent square root function. Let's create a new function here. Now, if it's translated left three units, let's do some highlight. Left three units, that would mean that I would have a plus three on the inside. Also has vertically stretched by a factor of four. Vertically stretched would mean that I'm multiplying by that number out in front. Reflect it over the x-axis. So that means we have a negative sign out in front. And finally, translate up. Let's do it in a different color. Translate up one unit. So that would be a plus one on the end. All right. Now, fill out the domain range. Now, one thing to note on this thing. This is one, three, five. Hey, I'm recording a video really quick. Yeah. So it looks like this point starts at two, one. So our equation, because we start with square root of x, it went two to the right and one up, so minus two plus one. So our domain starts at two, our range starts at one. We're going to the right, so positive infinity for our domain. We're going up, so positive infinity for our range. Okay, transformations for these things. Um, let's talk about each one of these. Minus 1 would cause it to shift. You know what? I'm not going to put an arrow there. Uh, minus 1 would cause it to shift right 1. The 4 out in front would cause it to vertical stretch. Because it's greater than 1. The, those are the only two transformations there. For number 12, minus 5 on the end would cause it to shift down 5. The 2 here would be a vertical stretch. Because it is greater than 1. And finally, the negative would cause it to reflect over the x-axis. Let's do a little bit of color coordinating. Negative, we'll do it this way, negative 2 and minus 5, minus 1, and the 4. Okay. Cool. Finally, for the last question, this graph is completely wrong, so ignore that. Um, if we actually graph this thing, 
when we're talking about restrictions, we always put the restrictions on the quadratic. So the function that has the squared on that. So because we have a squared, we're restricting f, not g. We also always restrict the domain. So c and d are just out. If we graph this, it would have a vertex at 3, 2. Now we want the positive side of this. So we want to go from 3 to positive infinity, or greater than or equal to 3, so a. All right, that should cover it. Have a good one, y'all.